Well, this looks like an enormous black bread van. This is the largest passenger vehicle that Nissan has ever made for North America. This is their latest 12 passenger Nissan NV 3500 HD. It's a really long name, but it is kind of an interesting alternative to the American full size van market. The first thing you'll notice about the NV are the proportions, because this isn't really shaped the same way that a GM or a Ford van is shaped, and that's because of this hood up here. Basically, what Nissan has done is they've taken the Titan, their full-size pickup truck, and they've made a van out of it. And while that sounds like the same formula that General Motors and Ford have used in the past, what's important is that Nissan left essentially the hood of the Nissan Titan in place, which means that the engine and the transmission are kind of under the hood. If you're familiar with GM or Ford vans, you'll know that the engine doesn't actually start until right under the windshield, meaning that the engine is actually under the uh, floorboards in between the two front seats. This does take a toll on inside space, but it also means that things are a lot easier to work on underneath the hood. Under the hood, you'll find the same two engine options as the Nissan NV cargo van. Starts out with a base 4 liter V6 engine, good for 261 horsepower, and we have this 5.6 liter V8 as ours is equipped here. Produces 317 horsepower, it's the same engine that's found in the Nissan Titan, and it's closely related to the Infiniti M56 engines. Now both engines are mated to a Nissan 5-speed automatic transmission, and it's rear-wheel drive only in these vans at the moment. As you can see, this engine is definitely under the hood, not under the passenger compartment in the NV van. That makes this quite a bit easier to work on. So if this was going to be your van rather than your company's van, that's probably something of a consideration. Although if you're a large fleet customer, it probably doesn't matter because your mechanics are used to working on a vehicle with the engine between the front seats. But again, if this is going to be your vehicle or you're a small company and you do some of the work on your vehicle yourself, this is an important consideration. The first thing you'll notice when you hop inside an NV van is how much more comfortable this is than a Ford or GM van. And it starts with this driver's seat, which is borrowed essentially from the Titan. We have a multi-way power driver's seat with a manual lumbar support. And of course, our SL model has a leather interior. And that's leather rear seats as well as leather front seats, which is also something very interesting for this market. We have a steering wheel borrowed directly from the Nissan Titan pickup truck, which is quite attractive. And we have the usual Nissan controls, so everything should be very familiar for you if you have any Nissan vehicle. Headroom is also very good up front, especially if you're taller drivers. I'm six feet tall, and this seat is just about as upright as it gets, and I still have about four inches of headroom left. Cargo and passenger vans have never really been known for interior quality or style, and the NV doesn't really depart from that too, too much, although this is a much nicer interior than the Ford or GM vans. We still have hard plastics on the dash, and hard plastics here as well. We have an interesting novelty, however, in the NV van, and that is optional two-zone climate control, as well as an optional nav system. Adding to the somewhat premium feel our SL tester is going for, we have two-way heated front seats, as well as a 400 watt and 150 watt AC inverter. That outlet is in the back. Nissan has put a number of nice touches into the NV, and they're most obvious back here in the passenger area. And it starts with these seats. These seats are easily removable, and this is compared to the GM and Ford competition, because as you can see, they're in modules. So this is one seat here, and uh, that's, that works for this second row as well as the third row. They're set up like this. So this seat over here on the left, this is a two seat uh, unit right here. And then there's this one seat unit that fills this third seat for this row. So if I take this out of the vehicle, you can see that it's fairly light, light enough that I can do that by myself. And you can see that you can actually rearrange these seats to a number of different configurations in the vehicle. These modules are also identical. So this is the same module used in the second row, as in the third row, as in the fourth row behind me. I'm in the third row of the NV now, and as you can see, I have about three or four inches of legroom left. Now again, that third seat is still removed from the second row. So you can see I also have about two or three inches of headroom left here in the middle. I do have a bit more headroom if I move to the outboard seat here in the NV, as you can see. I have about three or four inches of headroom here, and again, I'm six feet tall. Let's move to the fourth row now. If you're back in the fourth row, your view is somewhat limited because, of course, the NV has headrests for all passengers. This is also something that's a little bit different about the NV versus the Ford and GM vans, and that is this car has an awful lot of headrests. It means that rearward visibility from the driver's seat is pretty awful. Honestly, I don't know why there's a rearview mirror in this car because you can't actually see anything out the rear windows because of these headrests. However, if you're going to get rear-ended in a car, you want headrests. Trust me, your neck definitely does. So this is actually a good thing, although it does hamper rearward visibility. 
Fortunately, Nissan counters that with a backup camera available in this particular vehicle, and that's uh, it built into that low-cost navigation system up front. One nice touch in the back of the Nissan NV van are these seat belts that are actually built into the seat themselves. And this is as opposed to the Ford and GM vans where they're attached to the side of the interior of the vehicle. And when they're attached that way rather than to the seat as the NV is, then it means getting into the seat behind me, you have to trip through my seat belt in order to get to that seat behind me. And that is a bit of a pain. It also means that when you take these seats out of the vehicle, all the seat belts come with them rather than having them dangling from the side of the van. Since this is a van and not a minivan, we have a bit of a cup holder shortage. Most of the rows only have two cup holders for their three or four passengers per row. Overall, I give this cargo area a solid 5 out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index, and it loses points primarily because of its size. Now the rear cargo area just isn't that large in the NV because that large hood occupies a decent amount of what could be used for interior space. So you can see this rear seat is in place. This is the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight. And while you could stack a number of them up here in the rear, it would be pretty tricky to carry 12 people and 12 people's luggage in the NV unless they packed pretty light. Now the NV makes up for some of this by having these rear seats that can be removed half at a time. This is much easier than removing the rear seats in a Ford or GM van. And because you only have to remove two seats at a time, this means that you could turn this into a 10 passenger van with a decent amount of cargo space just by removing one of these two sides of the rear seat. Making cargo loading easier with the NV are rear doors that open almost completely flat with the side of the NV and don't interfere with the sliding side door. They also have a nice magnetic catch which allows them to stay in this position even if you're parked on a hill. The NV comes standard with a base CD playing audio system, but this particular unit right here is the optional low cost navigation system. This is $950 in the SV model and $850 in the SL model because the SL model already comes with Bluetooth standard. So in the SV model, buying this gets you Bluetooth, it gets you the navigation system with traffic interface as well. You also get XM satellite radio, get the usual AM FM radio CD player, and of course an iPod interface with an auxiliary input lower in the dash. Zooming in and out on the screen is very similar to a handheld navigation system like a TomTom -Tom or a Garmin unit. The system does display traffic information on the map as well. As you can see, the iPod interface on this unit is very snappy. It's also fully featured, giving you full access to playlists, artists, genres, etc. on your iPod. It's very easy to select songs and start playing on this system. Uh, now, the system doesn't offer voice commands for any of the iDevice functions. The only voice commands that the system provides are the telephone voice command functions. So if you want to enter an address into the navigation system, you have to be parked so you can use the destination entry screen. Otherwise, you're limited just to your previous destinations and going home if you're moving. Driving the NV is very much like driving a 3500 series pickup truck. You know, we don't just have that long hood out in front of us, but we also have an on-road feel very much like a stiffly sprung pickup truck. This also is quite high off the road, so if you're driving down the road, you'll notice this is just a little bit higher than some of the more recent 3500 series pickup trucks from Ford and General Motors. As you would expect with something designed to carry 12 Americans, the springs in the back are pretty stiff, and that leads to a somewhat compromising ride if the vehicle is empty. In the NV with the V8 engine, we have a great engine snarl, and 0 to 60 happens in just over 9 and a half seconds, although the vehicle feels a little bit faster than that number would indicate. Something that's also kind of entertaining and, and uh, I've never seen in a van before is this transmission blips the throttle on downshifts. Nissan, of course, implied that they would like their NV return shiny side up, and therefore we haven't really put the NV to its absolute handling limits test on these winding California mountain roads. But the NV does feel fairly confident, uh, surprisingly so, even on California Highway 17, which is fairly winding and, of course, has a 50 mile an hour speed limit. Because of the NV's curb weight, Nissan is not required to publish an official EPA miles per gallon rating for this vehicle. But in our testing, we've been averaging about 12 miles per gallon in the city and up to about 18 or 19 miles per gallon on the highway, going 65 miles per hour with the cruise control set. This has been a good for an average of about 13.8 miles per gallon overall during our 500 mile week with this vehicle. Well, that may sound bad, it is more efficient than driving two six passenger vehicles somewhere because of course we can carry 12 passengers in this vehicle. 
The Envy's fuel economy is better than Ford's E-Series van with their old four-speed automatic, but it's not quite as good as General Motors vans when they're equipped with the 4.8 liter V8 and their new six-speed automatic transmission. So who's the Nissan Envy for? Well, it's definitely for that family of eight or nine or 10 or 12 that wouldn't fit in a regular crossover utility vehicle very comfortably because you could fit 12 adults in this vehicle with relative comfort for a decent amount of time and you just couldn't do that with any kind of crossover. You could fit eight people in relative comfort in this vehicle as well, and not even the Honda Pilot will really fit eight adults comfortably for any length of time. It's also a good pick if you run a livery service and you want to give your customers a little bit more comfort and a little bit more luxury than would be available in a GM or Ford van, because of course we do have headrests in the Nissan Envy and we do have leather seats in the rear as well. The Envy is not for you if you value packaging efficiency because of course the Envy is longer than the 12 passenger vans from Ford and from General Motors. This Nissan van is also not a good fit for you if you need the extra luggage capacity that you can find in the 15 passenger vans from Ford and General Motors as well. The S Trimline NV passenger van starts at $31,990. That's really not the model you want unless you're doing livery or shuttle service because it really doesn't have any power accessories, no power door locks, you don't get a nav system, you don't get backup sensors, etc. And in a vehicle this big, you really need backup sensors, which means that the $34,190 SV model is the first model that gets you those. It also gets power seats and it also gets these six speakers added to that audio system. Now our model tested here is the $39,690 starting SL model and that gets you the dual zone climate control, gets you the leather seats inside and then again that's leather seats in the front and the rear. And our particular model tested here is $39,150 after destination and that optional navigation system.